Hey, Matt. Yeah, Neil. Do you want to build a snowman? Too soon, man. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Welcome back to the Gravel Guru here on the Gravel Guru platforms. Minister of Gravel in the studio today with Matt, producer Matt here. Neil, it is Mid South week. Matt, it is. You want to build a snowman? I, I really don't want to build a snowman, but if I do, I'm going to call it Bobby Jr. Yeah, you're going to call it Bobby Jr. and then you're going to kick it over. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Mid South week, I think we are wearing our smartphones out with the Weather Channel app. About every four seconds, but that is a typical Mid-South year. It's typical. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Every year that we go down to Mid-South, we're always checking the weather. I'm convinced, actually, that Bobby uses our registrations to pay the weather app people to force bad weather into the forecast just to make us all kind of stress out about it. But uh, really, honestly, not worried about it. Um, you know, we've, we've been training for this. We, well, uh, I mean... Not worried about this. Yeah, not worried about this. I mean, I'm going to take preparations, and we'll talk, I think, about some of that. So when you declare yourself not worried about this, how many hours today have you spent thinking about the weather in Oklahoma? I mean, I've pulled up the app probably three, maybe four times. I've definitely Since you've been in the studio? (laughs) Busted! Surveillance camera footage. Well, I mean, in all honesty, in all honesty, the thing is, is guess what? This happens every year, for the most part, that we go down south to Stillwater. The weather changes. The weather looks good. And guess what? Right now, the weather does not look good for that weekend. But guess what? Who knows what it's going to bring Friday and Saturday? Yeah, things, as we know, can change. I think it was sometime mid-last week I put a little reel out on Instagram kind of making fun of us a little bit tongue-in-cheek and also talking about Mid-South, the fact that in 2020 when we're sitting here, Bobby in the studio next to me, talking about Mid-South getting ready to go down, at that point we were a week out from the event and they were calling for a 75-degree day. And it was nowhere near 75 degrees at Mid-South 2020, um, and it rained a whole lot where it wasn't even supposed to be doing that either. I stood in a deep mud hole taking photos and video that day. A majority uh, there was one section that we drove down for getting a bike down a road i have no, no clue how we didn't have two vans worth of crew stuck still to this day out there on some of those roads but we're going to circle back around to weather here in a little bit more i mean we don't really have a ton to add but we can sit on camera and talk about how how we think things are going to play out so that way it flips script and is a nice beautiful sunny day be awesome but neil this is quite frankly a much bigger week for you than me you have been training I have not been training. <laughs> you have been running. I have not even been thinking about running. Uh, what, what, what it's is, not true either. I've been thinking about not running. <laughs> you, you've occasionally mentioned you thought about maybe getting out there and seeing what that run thing was. Yeah, but, but to be clear, I've never even laced up the shoes to go, to go to the mailbox even. Correct. Okay. And that's like 20 feet out my door. So you're right. It's going to be a big week. Um, this is ultimately... I guess you could call it stage one and stage two of the Double Double Championship with here and over at Gravel Worlds in August. Um, and the way things are looking, they're going to be completely different more than likely unless we get snow and really cold temperatures in August. Um, but yeah, no, a lot of a lot of training's been done. I've gotten definitely a whole lot more training in this time around than I did in 2019 when I uh, was, was doing the double. Um, I think... I feel good about it, really. I feel good about my running. I feel good about my fitness. Um, I'm just, I'm ready to go. Um, am I worried a little bit about what snow or cold temperatures could bring? Possibly. But I'll also say, if there's a point in the day where something is hurting a little bit, what's to say I don't just grab a little snowball and ice that section down? And um, But honestly... I think I'm. I think I'm ready for the run part. Um, I think I'm ready for that bike part. Um, been putting a little bit more miles in. You and me got a ride out to Cottonwood here. Yeah. Uh, about a week ago, and uh, done some more riding uh, since then. And I actually gotten you know, a lot of riding in beforehand too. And looking back at my riding from 2019, I rode a whole lot more this. You know, 
October, November, well, December, January, February than I did that time around. Maybe I'm just the type of friend that put off training for it, so that way we could suffer together on Saturday. You know, maybe that'll be the case. Um, reality is, when I'm looking at my plan on Saturday, we we all know I'm not I'm not racing for podium. That's not my spot. I don't I, I don't foresee that at least within my. Do you know how many people are doing the double double? Um, I know that. I think Bobby said 35. So, he... so this is my thought. You're not racing for a podium this weekend. I think there's a good chance you complete all four events and you could be on a podium. Well, and that's the thing we said even with Bobby. You you complete all four of these events and, yeah, you got a shot. Because the reality is, is it takes four good days mm-hmm. in four very tough different events. Different days. In different days. In very different days and in, in, in very different climates. I mean, you know, again, we... We might be complete polar opposites. August, we could end up having a day that's 80 degrees at 6 o'clock in the morning when we roll out, and it'd be 100 by noon or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, you really don't know what we're going to get then either. Um, while, while Gravel Worlds hasn't had the traditional rain and mud issues, um, boy, it can get hot up there, and it can they, get hot up there fast. They had it during the night before, during the... Uh, the long voyage this oh. past year, yep. So it does rain in Nebraska, we hear, in August mm-hmm. occasionally from time to time. So, you know, again, who, who knows what will happen. My my whole goal is just to get out there. Completion is number one. Completion is number one. Um, I would love to be faster on my 50K time than I was in 2019. It was slow. Um, there's no secret about that. I've been open before and said I walked, I think, the last eight or so miles in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was okay with that that year. Um, I would like to be able to yeah. go a little bit quicker, achieve a little bit better, um, pace. I, I know it's a tough course. That is everybody I talk to that does 50 Ks. When I tell them about that course says that it sounds like it's one of the toughest course just by, by how hilly it is out there. Yeah. And I, I understand that. I've heard that from a lot of people talking about how hard it is. I know the group, they did a group ride this last weekend out of district bicycles. It was actually the, the 50 K ultra running course was their training <laughs> ride on the bikes this weekend. So it's hilly, and uh, we learned a lot from when you did it. That was 2019, 2019. previously. Mm-hmm. So it'll be an interesting day out there. Again, who knows what the weather is going to bring. And I don't think we can overanalyze what the weather is going to bring too much on it. Um, we could sit here and refresh the app every five seconds, but guess what? It, it, <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't really matter on it. But, Neil, I guess my, my one of my big questions is, is we had, we had Bobby Wintle on the show on the podcast yep. audio side here a month or so ago, six weeks ago, talking about it, promoting the event. And even then, there was a little uncertainty about this event happening. Yep. I, I know for me, I've had a little bit of almost PTSD this week, uh, getting ready to go to Stillwater, thinking about getting things ready from work. Um, because the last time I packed up and went down there, we had a crew of about six or eight of us. We stayed at a hotel there and. I think Perry, and, uh, you know, the world changed while we were in Stillwater. Yeah, you know, I, I was actually this morning thinking about it. Mondays are my day off, so I get a lot of time to reflect and kind of focus on a lot of different things. And um, as I was kind of getting some things ready to go down this time around, looking at it and packing all of this cold weather gear Again, I went down to Oklahoma early that year. We have family down there, so we went down and spent a few days down before we even went to Stillwater for the race. So we were down in Oklahoma City with family. Well, again, early on, the forecast was still looking good and warm. And so part of the reason I didn't jump on the bike back in 2020, part of the reason, was I did not have any cold weather gear at all with me. I was planning on a 40 to 45 degree start. Um, under no rain clouds, <laughs> no lightning, uh, none of those issues that they had. And uh, I, I was not prepared. Um, and like you say, everything else that happened around that week too, it's all kind of, it starts flashing back to me a little bit today. And I'm sure as we get closer, um, I mean, I can remember a lot of the conversations with other riders that weren't down in Oklahoma yet that were, you know, across the globe, um, messaging me back and forth and, Hey, you're down there. What's it like down there? What's everything? And I'm like, well, I'm in Oklahoma city. I'm not in Stillwater, but it's kind of crazy. And then within 
probably about 45 minutes of some of those conversations, the NBA game that was taking place in Oklahoma City yeah. uh, was called. And then the next day we were up in Stillwater. And, 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 and I know that a lot of those things will probably flash back a little bit because I don't – I'm thinking back right now, and I don't know if I've been back through Stillwater since – 2020 i might have taken a a quick stop down through there but i really nothing's coming to mind of, of having been down there so i know that some of those no, that, those things are going to hit because that time we rode with anthony was what a month was, before, was before 2020 yeah. or before the yeah, mid-south of 2020 so. huh yeah no i think I, i'm truly looking forward to getting to stillwater yeah and the family reunion happening again the family reunion didn't really, in my opinion, happen in 2020. No. Always Mid-South is that thing that it, it, it's turning the page into spring, into cycling season. So I'm looking forward to being able to shake hands, give a few hugs. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm so glad. And, I, and again, I understand that things can happen back and forth with what COVID's been over the past two years. But right now we are obviously in a pretty good spot, it seems like. Um, when the CDC is even telling us we don't have to worry about masks and other certain things. I mean, that, mm-hmm. that at least provides me a certain level of comfort. I know it does a lot of other people as well. Um, but, I mean, I remember being down there in 2020, and, again, it was so new to all of us that we didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And it was quite awkward. I mean... It was awkward. It was awkward. I mean, it was, it was an awkward situation. It did not feel... And and we had these conversations that it didn't feel like a family reunion. It didn't feel like the party. It didn't well, feel like it the all stoke. felt like we all had to stay in our clusters I mean, here and there. I, I mean, mean, the stoke was just a little kennel that was just barely, you know, just barely lit and burning. And but the stoke just was not what I had felt in 2019, 2018, 2017, yeah. 2016. I mean, it, 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 there was no similarities, um, and I can already feel this year. We're excited to get down there. Everybody's excited to get down there. Nobody's, I think, coming down there with any apprehension of, you know what, even if it snows, who cares? We're going to be down there and have a good time because we're excited to get back and enjoy what Mid-South has been for a decade now. Yeah, 100%. Looking forward to meeting people, seeing people. Hoping Hoping it holds out so there's an expo. See what new products are out there Friday while you're out running or something. Yeah, have fun with that. Enjoy. (laughs) <laughs> so, so we're we're headed to Stillwater. Yes, Thursday. You and I are both headed, and we're we're headed separately, but we're we're headed to Oklahoma South. What is kind of your plan for the weekend? Okay, so obviously, I, my intention was to head out afternoon, early afternoon. Again, that those plans could change between now and I might head out a whole lot earlier, just depending on what the weather is possibly bringing, because I don't want to have travel you know road travel issues getting down there i want to be able to get down there get down there safely because oklahoma is known for their good roads um let me tell you i've had one accident ever in my life in the snow and i grew up in chicago okay i've experienced 20 inch snows before all that stuff one accident ever in the snow in oklahoma yeah so uh yeah they're known really well for cleaning off their roads and taking care of them um so i would like to be able to get down there before a lot of snow falls on thursday I have a feeling we won't have a sponsorship from Oklahoma Department of Transportation now. Don't care. Don't want one. No, right. <laughs> just so. just going to be honest with you. So get down there Thursday night. Get down there Thursday. They're going to have the beer can release party, I believe, that evening at Iron Monk. I'm going to get some dinner. A um, friend of mine, Mindy from Colorado, she's also doing the double-double with me. Um, we're going to get together, grab some dinner. I know. Well, what are you going to try to eat that night, like, idea-wise? <sighs> Ideally, I don't want something too heavy um you know i don't have honestly i don't have a food picked out exactly okay. it depends yeah. what restaurant we go to if we go to louis downtown i think it's louis that's downtown there there's a place I've, I've, I've ate there in years past you know i'll go relatively light i think relatively something safe you know maybe a chicken maybe a fish something like that maybe some pasta um you know not I'm not gonna get too crazy not gonna get outside of my comfort mm-hmm. zones I mean, heck, in years past, I'd just go to Chick-fil-A a lot of times, get a chicken sandwich, well, to be honest with you. In 2020, I think the crew, I think we ate there yeah. every single meal, almost. And so, you know, but but get a meal in me. But I'm not, I want to get back to the hotel at a relatively decent time. Um, when I get back, I want to go through and make sure that I have everything that I need. Because, have, you, have you made your list yet? Um, I've actually packed most of my stuff. Okay. So my list is made and, for the most okay. part, packed right now. 
Um, it's Monday, by the way. We're, yeah, we're, we're filming this Monday evening. Um, and so um, I've, I've got most of it packed. Um, because I don't want to forget something, I have forgotten things in the years past at Mid-South. 2020, obviously, weather changed. 2017, helmet, yes, I forgot. Um, and so I don't want to forget anything if I can help it um, heading down there. So when I get back to the hotel, take everything out. I'll have a spare bed in that room that, that night because the family's not going to be coming down until And just lay everything Saturday. out in there. So lay everything out, make sure it's all there, make sure I got it all organized. And then honestly, get to sleep. Um, get to sleep relatively normal time for me is anywhere between 10 to midnight. So if I can lay down at 10 o'clock, I doubt I get eight full hours of sleep and wake up at six. But if I do, fantastic. Um, if I don't, that's fine. Um, then wake up, get breakfast, um, slowly get ready. I don't want to sit around cause I will likely, again, if the forecast stays, stay clothed, you know, yeah. pretty, you know, layers. I'll have a lot of layers Absolutely. going on for, for the event. Um, but I want to get ready. And then honestly, again, if there's looking forward to what we're looking at forecast, and again, don't want to focus too much on weather, but it's hard to, to not correct. But if there's snow, I need to figure that time in to get downtown for the run. And so, again, it might take a little bit longer to get downtown if there's a couple inches of snow. Again, I don't know what we're going to look at. So I'd just like to have that extra time. We have a runner's meeting at 7.30. Event starts at 8 o'clock. Um, and so, again, my, ho- my hope is to be able to, to wiggle in enough time that I can you know travel, I think, it's three miles from my yeah. hotel to downtown safely. Um, find a good place to park that's hopefully not terribly far from the finish line so that I can get all of my stuff uh, for recovery because I, that's one thing this year I'm doing that I didn't do in 2019 is I'm going to jump right into recovery after finishing. Um, I mean, that that's number one priority for me after I cross that finish line is to, to start recovering for, mm-hmm. for what Saturday brings. So Okay, so you go, you do, we're at the start line for the 50K. Yeah. Let's jump to the finish line for you. Okay. Friday afternoon, Friday evening-ish. Riders meeting at 6 p.m., I believe, down there at the stage. Uh-huh. What what does that turn around for you? You think, ideally, ideally, everything goes well. What does that turn around from finishing the 50K to being ready to ride the bike in the morning? Uh, so first thing, obviously, again, I'm going to focus on recovery. So I will probably get recovery shake in me. I will probably start putting a little bit of fluids back into me, but not fully. I'll probably hit more fluids maybe an hour, hour and a half after that recovery drink. Um, give that some time. Um, I've got the little therapy gun. I'll hit that, take care of the legs, um, take care of all those tender spots because there's going to be a bunch of them um, after running 31.4 miles, I think it is. And then, uh, yeah. And then after that, um, a meal, definitely getting some food uh, within me at that point, really, again, start to focus on the hydration. Um, even though it's going to be cold, we still need to take care of our hydration, or at least, you know, it's it's supposed to be cold. We've got to take care of the hydration, and I'm not always good about that well, in the cold. I, I, I've struggled about that well, in the past. In the whether cold. there's snow or not, it's going to be cold Saturday morning, yeah. Friday morning. Yeah. Like, I, I, I feel confident in that forecast, <laughs> temperature-wise. Who knows on precipitation and moisture. It's going to be cold in the mornings, for at least. Yeah. So that that's going to be a weakness for you and I both. Yeah, I, I just I've, I've got to remember to drink. I've got to remember to drink. I, I, I just know in our fifty mile to Cottonwood, we had way too much left in the bottles. You know, and 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 I think one of the things that I probably end up doing that I learned in twenty seventeen because I do take most of my calories mm-hmm. um, through the bottles is I probably put an extra scoop of Tailwind in each bottle, um, and and maybe I don't pound down as many bottles. Maybe I grab a just a cup or something or a half a bottle at the the checkpoints or at the aid stations um so so that way you're getting more calories i'm getting the calories but i'm not drinking as much fluid so one of the things that really again 2017 was a whole lot of things we could go back and we could relive all that if we wanted to but one of the things that hurt me a lot in 2017 especially the second half um was i went through four bottles of fluids did my fluids well in the first 50 was going through my bottles of fluids really well well, about mile 60, those fluids started coming out, and I was probably stopping every four to six miles to go to the bathroom. And when you just continue to build up that time and build up that time and stop and have to go and stop and have to go, 
Um, again, it really affected me. And so I, I toyed with some things in cold weather events after um, that 2017 uh, event and, and found that um, I could go on less bottles but still bring the same amount of calories. So I was getting the calories. I was getting that intake. I just wasn't quite putting as much fluid in me, and it seemed think, to work really well, at least for my body. Yeah, Again, everybody's I th- different. I think that's probably a good tip for me to keep in mind too. Yeah. I mean, because I don't want to have to be in one of those events. We did it at Growler where we overhydrated. This is TMI, 100%. <laughs> but we overhydrated, and it was a cold day. Honestly, the weather was probably pretty similar to what we're – it was a cold morning. Yeah. Other than the precipitation, it was a dry day, but it was a cold day out there. I mean, I don't think the coats ever came off that day. Oh, I'll be honest. I really can't remember. I think I had a so, long sleeve jersey. I think yeah. I had a long sleeve jersey. Maybe that by day. the middle of the afternoon when we finally got, found yeah. the pretzels. Yes. <laughs> the coats came off. But, okay. So that's how, you know, paying attention to our hydration and our calories. Yeah, I mean, I, we, we, we say that weather but, for any event. But, but back to what, so what you were saying as far as the recovery or what I planned between the two events. So, I, like I said, getting fluids. Get back to the hotel at some point. I'll probably jump in a hot tub. I, I know I did that last time. Man, that felt fantastic. It was good. The only thing about the hot tub, too, that I have to be careful of is being there probably too long because that also can probably suck some fluids out of my system as well. Assume, just, assuming there's fluids to suck out of your system after 31 there, miles. I hope there is because I know that I woke up at 2 a.m. in 2019 and didn't have probably anything in my system, and I was miserably sick. Um, sick like I've never been again I've tried to stack some runs back to back and I've had some long runs and never woke up feeling like this before but um, I've also haven't ever treated my body as miserably as I did after the you know, that 2019 event I did not take care of myself at all I just thought ah, I'd be fine and get back out there and it was a huge mistake um, one again I learned from uh, but get it, get in the hot tub, maybe just soak, you know, anything that's sore, just soak, hopefully again, get some more recovery. Um, and then again, try to get to sleep. I mean, honestly, one of the best things I can do for recovery for my body is get a good night's sleep and get that rest. And then Saturday morning, it's get up and go, man, it's get up and go and whatever it throws at us, it throws at us and just ride my bike. We're just going to get on our bikes and ride Saturday. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I'm not looking to go hard uh, uh, out of the gate. I just, I'm not I, um, for I, a lot of reasons. You know, for the reasons, I, I think we're pretty much somewhat riding together for the most part. It's kind of our plan at this point. Matt but can I, hang I, with me. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see who's <laughs> hanging with who. I'm going to yeah, feel really bad if I feel like I'm dragging you down uh, since you ran 31 miles the day yeah, before. I, I have a feeling that I'm not going to be able to keep up with you or Mindy or anybody else that uh, I'm I, thinking I, I'm I think we'll to I think we'll be fine. <laughs> because one thing is, is weather is a great equalizer. It is, yeah. Um, you know, I've been talking to Isaac down at Gravel City. Yeah. A fair amount. He's signed up to go. Uh, there's a lot of people, I think, probably on the fence of, do I do 50? Do I do 100 that day? I think my attitude right now, right now at 8 p.m. on Monday evening is uh, I'm going to do the 100. Yeah. Do go the out. Man. And I'm just going out to pedal. Like, I could care. I am not going to be on the podium. I can guarantee you that. I'm going out to have a good day and uh, see Bobby Wintle at the finish line. Yeah. You know, and, and again, here's the thing. And this is just me. And again, I'm looking at weather. Yes, I have looked at weather a lot more than the three times I said. Um it's looking like Saturday will be a sunny day. And and we have to, again, I think, figure that in. And the reason why I say that is because you and I have both ridden days where it's been 45 and cloudy and 45 and sunny. And that sun is also a big difference. Well, it might be a little the, bit chilly at the start line, but the, by the afternoon, we're, we're going to warm up. Once my butt's on the seat, I am not worried about temperature, temperature-wise. I mean, this is what we've trained in all winter to get to this point here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we've had a few great days. We've also had a few cold days. And, and I will advise people, make the right decisions at the start. Um, don't, you know, maybe you are one of those people that can go out there and you can you can ride in the shorts if it's really bitterly cold and you can do that. But I will say in 2017, I will say in 2019, which 2019 was a good year. It was a dry year. It was a relatively fast year. Um, it wasn't a fast year for me because I had ran 31 miles a day before. Um, but I will say in 2019, even I saw people on the side of the road covered in emergency blankets because it was still cold in the morning and they weren't ready for the cold in the morning. Mm-hmm. And so they got going and their bodies shiver and all that stuff kind of kicked in and they're sitting there on the side of the road, shivering and uncontrollable and trying to find somebody that's got an emergency blanket to take care of them while 
paramedics and other well, people are rushing out there to make sure these folks are okay. I think that's a valid point. What you just said was they were looking for other people to take care of them. Um, we, we know at this point, mid South is epic in whatever fashion it's going to be. Um, you, you got to be prepared to take care of yourself. Yeah, be, be prepared again. Don't again. If you think you know, if you've ridden in, in cold stuff, if you're up from the north and you've ridden in cold like this all all winter long in shorts or not a whole well, lot, go for it. I, cool. I think this is kind of my soapbox. That's not me. The thing is, is there's going to be so many people that want to help you be successful on that day. But the thing is, is don't drag their day down because you weren't prepared. Well, and, and to they they did release today for folks. They're going to have a drop bin, basically, at the midway point. Well, at the 40% of the way point. Um, take advantage of it. If you need to throw those leggings on in the morning, but you want to pull them off 40 miles in, do it. Jacket, same thing. Do it. Take advantage of it. But I would say the amount of people I have seen in years past when they hit that cold morning air and their body wasn't ready for it, that were sitting on the side of the road and their race was done within the first 10, 15 miles. Don't do that. I totally jinxed myself Don't do with that. this. Nah, you're fine, man. Just ride your bike. Yeah, so we talk about the drop back. I think at mile ride 40, let, let's jump let, let, Let's jump into the yeah. route. Yep. I mean, we're not going to super analyze it. Nope. I, I don't know that much of this route, to be honest. I know it's 102 miles, yep. and I know the checkpoint's near mile 40 in Pawnee. Um, with the drop back... I think my only intention is, and I don't know if it'll go in the draw bag service or maybe another local family or something that's up there sagging in support. I, I'm thinking for me, the only thing that might go in it is a few extra packets of Tailwind because Tailwind's kind of heavy. I mean, mm-hmm. to carry on the bike all day and a dry pair of socks. Um, so I already told you what I'm doing that day. I'm, I will actually be bringing my bike packing rear yeah. seat bag with me. Um, it's it's not massive. Um, I'm used to riding with it. Um, it will be basically empty for the most part at the start, except for maybe an extra pair of socks. That's always a really nice thing, mm-hmm. I think, to have, um, especially if you do get wet feet. Um, it's nice to have that extra pair of socks. But otherwise, um, what I'll be doing is I'll probably be just stripping layers at random times, and I might not be ready <laughs> by mile 42. Yeah. To take a layer off. Yeah. And I, so what's what do I do? Do I get cold? Do I not get cold? Well, you know what? I'll take whatever I have and I'll put it in the seat bag. And I'll be fine. I can carry the weight. That's, we're, it's not that, it's not, we're, not we're that running, different. We're running pretty identical setups. I don't know if I'm taking the seat bag or on the Fargo. I have the, the triangle bag, the Ovea Negra bag that I really like there in the middle of, of the frame. Yeah. That, that I mean, there's going to be a pair of socks, a pair of dry gloves, a few things like that mm-hmm. in there for me, just just to help me get through the day. Because again, I, I'm really running pretty self sufficient. I think. Uh, again, and the thing is, I'm used to doing that. I rode a century on a relatively yeah, cold I morning mean, back in November. Got out. It was you know in the I think upper 20s, low 30s when I took off um, and rode self supported 100 miles. You know, nobody along the way at any point, any time. Helped me, refueled me, anything. I went and stopped at gas stations, and I've done that a lot of times before in the past. So I'm okay taking care of myself, putting my clothes in my thing, taking, making sure I have the right things on. Uh, but if you're not used to it or you don't have the bags to carry, don't go out and buy a Nove Renegra bag or some big seat bag or, or triangle bag if you don't have it right now. Just you can do that. If they're providing an option for you to toss yeah. it all in a bin, toss it all in the bin and hope that you find all your stuff when you get back to, to Stillwater later in the day. Um, but take advantage regardless of being able to take layers off. If it's you're carrying your own layers or you're doing that, I would say you're better off doing that at the start of the event than going out there in not enough stuff in maybe not making it even 10 miles. Again, and I'm just talking from what I've seen in the past, what I've seen other riders. Yeah. Again, 2019 was not a terrible year. There was no moisture. There was no mud. There was no difficult stuff like mm-hmm. that that was bringing us down at the beginning. And yet still within the first 12 miles, I saw individuals on the side of the road covered in those yeah. those emergency blankets and i think as we talk about the route mile 40 ish there pawnee for the checkpoint early checkpoint in the day yeah i mean i would much rather have a checkpoint at 60 than 40 if i'm doing a self-supported 
um, type ride or, or an event like this. I'd much rather be past the halfway point when I get there, but that's not what this route brings us. This route is very much a square, uh, basically <laughs> yeah. basically north of Stillwater. You're going to go 10 miles east on the way out, essentially, and then cut north up to Pawnee. I mean, the roads are not quite the square grid that they are here in Kansas right. town there. But then we have that north section. That's the only part that really kind of scares me out of Pawnee from 40 to 65-ish. And, and, and I judge this solely on the fact that when I look at the satellite view, there's not many houses on these roads, which means there's not many people down these roads, which means they're probably not overly maintained roads. Well, I know some of these these roads, if you watched Bobby's video when Bobby did last year his ride on his storm chaser, Bobby Wintel his ride on a storm chaser, and he went through and he did this route um, as their virtual, you mm-hmm. know, uh, event last year um, these roads were brutal these roads were tough and I think he said even when he was on the uh, podcast with us that it took him like three hours for to, get to that one this. section yeah through this section up north and so um, it is remote um, we're riding through different roads than we've rode through before some people have been there in the past yeah they might have gone through maybe some sections of this so like the first 10 miles in the last be familiar. Yeah, the the first 10 miles might be familiar to folks back 2015, 2016, mm-hmm. uh, because those were the last 10 or so miles in. Maybe even some of the ones that are heading north were part of that route as well. Uh, but a lot of this route, for the most part, is new roads to land run mid-south um, riders of years past. And so I, I think there's going to be some... Uh, some cool new things to see, put it yeah. that way. I'm looking forward to it. I rode about the first 10 in the last 10 miles of this uh, back from Lake McMurtry, yeah. McMurtry whichever it is there, uh, bikepacking a couple of years ago with the crew. And I, that looks very similar to the route we took there. So I, th- that feels familiar. And as you get closer to town, there's more and more houses. You're going to feel that kind of vibe of getting close to a town and knowing that the finish line is not far away. So we've got checkpoint at 40. Mm-hmm. We know there's a checkpoint at 80 mm-hmm. out there. So I, I feel like I saw something too, and I'd, I'd have to double check emails. Um, but I think they even said there's going to be some. There'll be something at twenty. I know with yep. gra- with the gravel world crew will be there. Um, I feel like I saw something also that said that around mile sixty, uh, there was going to be something. And so they're putting in a lot of I think aid stations to make sure to help folks out, um, because it is the first time we've been back. If I'm not mistaken, like I say, there's something right there around mile sixty. Uh, to help riders out as well and and so a lot of a lot of aid stations the big one is the one like you say at mile 80 that's a huge one that's one that'll have uh, for lack of a better way of putting it there's a big party going on there now some of these aid stations like for instance the one at mile 60 um might have been mile 52 is going to be chamois butter chamois butter is what it was okay yep. so mile 52 I knew, I knew it was somewhere past the midway point um but they're going to have different things out there. Um, I think it's another way, for, obviously, for sponsors to help get them involved, to get them to be a part of this. Uh, but also, it's a place that maybe you can get an extra bottle or maybe something if you needed it. Um, at the same time, too, I would say make sure you're carrying with you what you need just in case. Because make sure you're I'm also- carrying, carrying with you what you need. Um, I, I think as we wrap up the show, we're going on just over a half hour here now. Final thoughts for me is, as much as we talked weather at the top of the show, um, I'm going to read something that the Gravel Doc posted on Instagram today, and I'll I'll throw it up on screen here, and I think this is very important to remember. Gravel Doc, he lives in in the Shawnee, that that general area down there, rides a lot of the red clay roads. Um, Dear at Mid-South Gravel Peoples, let me start by stating that we literally live on these dirt roads. We know them intimately. We know when to ride them and when not to ride them. We know how much moisture they can take and how long it takes for them to dry out. So, dot, 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 Oklahoma weather is weird. (laughs) Always has been. There's a risk of winter weather for Friday. Snow is good, dot, dot, dot. It means less actual moisture on the roads. These roads require two things to be happy. Sun and wind, both of which will be in abundance this coming week. We've not had a lot of moisture this winter. So the roads are dry fast right now. Yesterday it rained on Sunday. With today's sun and wind, it'll be rideable by noon. On Saturday, the weather could not look any better. Sunny and high of 50. This weekend is the epic return to gravel event we've all been waiting for. Let's show up big and have the most amazing homecoming the world needs right now. Much love. See you Friday, Saturday. 
I, I think this stood out to me when I saw it on Instagram today, um, this morning. And obviously mm-hmm. things change as the day goes on and whatnot. But I've actually never met Gravel Doc in person, I don't think. Alan, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah. Um, I just know people by their Instagram handles. <laughs> um, Alan, but, White, I believe. But, I mean, this is the same thing that come the end of May, the weekend after Memorial Day, when our, when our DMs start blowing up here in Emporia, Kansas for Unbound Gravel of people start asking us. Mm-hmm. I have full faith. I'm putting it on him. I've got full faith in trusting the locals down there. And I think the thing that stood out to me even more was not shortly after that, Bobby Wintel sent out an email this morning to about the event, just reminding us in, in the Bobby Wintel way that saying, this is the time, be here. Don't get scared. Don't make a decision. Did not come based off unrealized pain that you think you're not capable of handling. You are capable. It won't feel as cold as you think. The stoke will carry you. No, I, I you know, and, and that's the uh, an important thing. Um, what stood out to me most in that is the three words: don't get scared. Because um, yeah, we can talk a lot about weather. You're going to stress about weather. We're all going to stress about weather. We're all going to be thinking about it. Am I wearing enough? Am I not wearing enough? Again, I would caution people on the side of make sure you're warm enough. Um, but that's just personally me where I'm at. And again, what I've witnessed in years past. Um, but don't get scared. The reality is none of us are in the shape that we're going to be in probably come June, come the summer months. Um, we don't train may- maybe the same way through the winter months as we would typically train. Uh, whether it's be in frequency or in style. Um, and so don't be worried about it. Get out there. Have fun. It's the thing that I've encouraged. I know you a lot about. Like, talk to people. Like, there's going to be a lot of people on course within a 100-mile section. Have the conversations. Talk with one another. Get to know new people. I can't tell you over the years that I've rode this event how many people I've gotten to know just while sitting on the bike next to him suffering, that we've become good friends just from sitting there, having a good time, sharing a conversation, even though we're both looking down and we're saying, how can I only be going nine miles an hour? I'm faster than this. I know I'm stronger than this. How can I only be going this fast? And yet we're having a blast still and enjoying the time and have become great friends. And, you know, again, I can look at so many people and say that over the past years of writing this event. So don't be afraid. Do it. Get down there. It's going to be a good time. I can't wait. We're all going to suffer. Yep. We're all going to have fun. We're all going to come back next week with, with things to get to talk about and experiences had. I don't think I can wrap up the show any better myself. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you're listening to this on the podcast, um, can't wait to see everybody in Stillwater. If you see us, come say hello. Um, you know, it's been a long time since we've seen each other. I, I didn't make it up to Gravel Worlds this year, so this is literally my first race back in two years of being out there. So I, I just can't wait. I know as soon as I step out of the car in Stillwater, it's going to feel like we're home. Yeah, can't so, wait, man. Yep, stay tuned for our next episodes. Watch social media all weekend for content from Mid-South. Lots of good follows out there. Uh, and, and for us, I mean, as I wrap up the show, things are going to be different. We won't have the typical highlights that we usually do because – I'm going to be on the bike. Yes. So Sorry, I'm excited I, I've never that. actually started on a bike at one of these big events. So I'm looking forward to it and maybe a little bit different perspective when we come back in the studio next week after spring break. Absolutely. See you later, guys.